I feel like I kind of ramble and blurt out a lot because I'm like, I want to give you all that you need in this episode. <laughs> and then it becomes a little bit too much, but... No, um, no, too much is, uh, is enough. And that's what I always say to other people. So it's like this weird thing mm. where, anyways, it, you know, it's a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I think we're ready to kick off. Yeah, we can, we can go. Let's go, I'm let's ready. go. <laughs> All right, and welcome to the Pagey Train. Today I have in the studio with me Rachel Baker, actor, writer, director. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here. Well, I think I left off one of the most important parts there. Also a fellow podcaster. Also a fellow podcaster, yes. Um, I have to say that I'm a little bit envious of your podcast name. I think it's a very good name. Thank you. I didn't come up with it. <laughs> <laughs> a friend, I literally, um, one of my very good friends um, who is a videographer, we went back and forth with names for um, about a month. Yeah. I would literally just like be walking down the street and be like, what about this? And he'd be like, no. <laughs> so he actually came up with Don't Be So Dramatic mm. as a name. It's a great um, name. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, it works really well, obviously, because it's about the entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, um, how, how long have you been doing that now? About two and a half years now. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Yeah. What, I, I actually like cannot um, mentally right now do the math of what year that would be. Mm-hmm. So y- you decide. <laughs> <laughs> well, 2018, 2019, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, around there. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, so, how, uh, what episode are you up to? So, I'm up to episode 66 now. Um, I kind of um, at the start was basically just kind of uploading when I could Mm. and now have um, been on a bit of a schedule of every two weeks I kind of try and upload. Mm. Um, So that's kind of, yeah, but it's interesting because I'm the executive producer on it, although um, it's in association with the Hub Studio, which is an actor's studio. Yeah, I was about to ask you about that. What is the Hub Studio? So the Hub Studio (laughs) is um, basically an actor's studio in which um, Mm. they run a whole bunch of classes Mm. for actors and whatnot. Um, and they have, um, some amazing coaches that come in, all of the top casting directors in Mm -hmm. Sydney, all of the, um, some amazing, very talented acting coaches. They have teach classes there. Um, and yeah, I actually ended up interviewing the owner of the hub basically Mm -hmm. a year into doing my podcast and, um, he turned around and said, I really like what you're doing. We actually wanted to start a podcast for The Hub, but we have no time. Mm. Um, we'd love to kind of jump on and just support you and potentially have this like collab going yeah. on. And that has like, yeah, that has helped me in amazing ways. I just, Well, it yeah. gives you a pool of guests and it gives you it um, uh, other platforms to get access to. So it's good to have yes. partnerships like that. Yeah, yeah. They basically, all of their contacts that they have in the industry, in their database, they went, here you go. And yeah, so wow. that was like... Ah, makes it okay. easier. Yeah, it's makes hard, it easier. It can be hard to get guests. It can be. Yeah. Um, and mind you, plenty of them say no to me or don't respond. But then I do get some mm. amazing guests because... It's the Hub Studio, and because I've had previous guests on that they're like, oh, I know who that is, kind of thing. So, yeah. Well, we're almost up to the same episode number. We're, this is episode 68. <laughs> yeah, so samesies. Yeah, yeah, we're up to... Yeah, this is episode 68, okay. so we've been running it about two years. This is our third year. Okay, so we're in competition. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I don't look at it that way. No, I, neither do I. I, I think it's, um, it's great to talk to other podcasters. I think you're yeah. like the third or fourth podcaster I've had on the show. Okay. I just like to pick people's brains about how they go about things and um, their tech setups or their platforms like yeah um so um, wh- where's your podcast at at the moment where can, we, where can we find you so um obviously apple podcast and spotify mm. i'm purely audio so i don't film it um so anytime i see podcasts that film it, i'm like <laughs> good on you <laughs> because it's so much work it it's, is another element it's another element it's i mean pretty big. yeah it's i'd love to but I mean, you, you're lucky to have a space where you can film it as well. Mm. I do have a studio in which I record, mm-hmm. um, but like, and I, oh, I'm, you know, it's just, if I really wanted to, I could, let's be honest, but mm. I just, um, yeah, I don't particularly at this time want to record it because I want to turn up just looking how I want to look because mm. as an actor, yeah, you got to be camera ready. You have to be camera ready. Mm. Whereas with the podcast, I'm like, oh, yeah. I just want to turn up in my exercise gear, you know? <laughs> <laughs> One of my earlier, uh, earlier guests, they showed up and like, I didn't know you were filming it. 
I'm like, oh, well, I just figured you looked at it online and you were, you you would know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, now I um, uh, if I think that they may have not seen the podcast before, I go. By the way, it's it's filmed and it's on it's YouTube. Filmed, um, you know, yeah. put a nice shirt on. But I do recommend, like, um, because uh, I have other friends that do uh, podcasts and they still go on YouTube even though they don't have um footage. I just put up their logo. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a whole other thing as well. Mm. And mind you, even though. I'm a filmmaker. The editing side of things, I'm not heaps amazing at. Mm. I can edit my little like audition tapes and showreels mm. and whatnot in iMovie. That's fine. Mm. But to do a whole logo with the little wave thingies of like when you're talking and all that, like, yeah, you know, it's a it's a whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Um. Before I well now we do um vision switching for the Pady train. Yeah. But before um now like this is episode two where we're doing um vision switching. So. It saves an hour because uh, essentially yeah. if you do an hour podcast, then you film a podcast. Yeah. So you've got to record it. Then you've got to um, extract that, put it into some edit software, synchronize the clips and yeah. then do a live edit of uh, like a post live edit. So oh you've got to do the podcast twice if you do that. Yeah. And it's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is a lot of work. So. <laughs> well, I can tell you kids, if you do a film podcast out there, um, if you do um, about oh, 30 to 40 episodes a year, it's about 95 to 100 hours of work. Yeah. Yeah. But if you vision switch it, um, it halves it. Okay. Yeah. So, but the vision switching, as you, like when we were setting up the show, there's things that can go wrong. Oh, yes. It's yeah. It's a lot more complicated. Yeah. 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 But in the end, you know, you just get to watch yourself on screen, which is why we're all in the filmmaking that's game, right. isn't it? <laughs> that's right. That's right. No, but sometimes I go, oh, you know, Roscoe, why don't you just do a, a, a Zoom, uh, not not like a Zoom um, uh, on it, the internet, like a recording device. Yeah, yeah. Just do a recording device, get a couple of mics. You can, can then go to anywhere because I've got mates that go around, they just go to people's houses and yeah, podcast them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're mobile in that sense. Yeah. Um, do you do that or... Yeah, yeah. So all of my equipment is very mobile. It's very simple, but um, it's great. So I just have like a little um, little uh, two-channel mixer, mm -hmm. um, which plugs straight into my laptop. Um, and then I just have two mics coming off that and the headphones in that. And that's it. Yeah. So I have um, gone to people's houses. I can record at my house and do it over Zoom as mm -hmm. well. And because I'm not filming it the zoom episodes don't matter as much which mm. is very helpful over the whole covid thing yeah um so yeah i am very movable which is great um yeah i don't i don't know it's it's podcasting when when we think about it this way there are just so many different ways that you can do it mm. and create such a good product mm -hmm. which is very exciting i think and same with filmmaking there are mm. so many different ways that you can do it and still come out with a really good product it just kind of depends on how you understand what you're doing and what your goals are i yeah, guess yeah you need to have a bit of a mission plan yes you, yeah, do. you need a goal and, yeah. and what and why are you doing it Yes, um, yes. Like I had personal reasons to start a podcast. Like I wanted to talk to more people. I thought you were going to say, because I wanted to talk a lot. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I wanted to be um, a better speaker, a better listener. Yeah. Um, but then I thought, well, I've got um, all these people that need to get their material out there because I've known so many yeah. people that are promoting films, promoting music, promoting books. Um, and I thought, well, I've got the technical skills to do it. Um, and so that's where those two things got coupled together. Uh, the surprise for me when I started podcasting is it's an art in itself. Mm -hmm. um, it really is. Just even to um, when you remove the technical side of things, just a conversation um, when you're locked in with headphones and it's just you and the other person. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that, um, yeah, just that's an art yeah. in itself. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's, a, that's what I found that it was a bit of a surprise for me. It's a bit of a buzz. Yeah, it's, I found that like it's kind of spilled into my everyday relationships as well, which is really interesting. Like I never kind of realized how good I was at listening and getting things out of people and mm. then kind of moving them on to different things um, and getting them to say what I want them to say until I started podcasting. And then I kind of like, you know, with my partner or with my friends, I find that like I'm taking on the listening role so much now <laughs> and it's just yeah it was I don't know if you find that with Misty or with like your friends as well do you find that you're like mm -hmm, well I can't mm -hmm. well yeah I can't figure out was this happening before or was I or, or is it just being doing podcasting that's yeah. illuminated that for me I don't, I don't know. know I don't know <laughs> sometimes I'll be talking in a pub I'm like this is a podcast I should be 
like recording this. This is a great conversation. Yeah, yeah. And um, I don't know. Sometimes when I'm hanging out with some friends, they're like, "Man, stop interviewing me." <laughs> We're not on a podcast, dude. <laughs> I feel that way sometimes as well. <laughs> well. I'm just an inquisitive person. I know, and you have to be. You really have to be interested in what the other person is saying. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just going to be utter shit. And you're like, "Why am I putting this out into the world?" You know. So. Yeah. Well, we always get surprised as well. Like, um, yeah, as I said, like talking about podcasting. Um, you know, you find out how they do it. Are they a mobile sort of person or are they a studio person or is it a bit of both or they just do it on the internet? Mm-hmm. And looking at that sort of technical stream of how they do it versus how they do it um, creatively because it's a creative art doing a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it yeah. definitely is. Yeah. Um, and I mean, like, in in the creativity sense, you know, I like, well, kind of yourself as well, I don't plan any of my questions. I just kind of go in having researched the person Mm. and um, having picked out like, oh, they've done this or they've done that. Like, I'd like to mention those things, but I don't ever plan like having written down questions, which works for me, Mm. but creatively for someone else, I can definitely understand why that wouldn't work for them. Um, So yeah, it's just very interesting. It's, it, I guess it just depends on the type of person as well, you know? Yeah. Well, a bit of my background um, into getting into podcasting as well was, um, uh, I used to interview a lot of people, so I was always behind the camera or as a, um, uh, a camera operator or a producer. Mm-hmm. You know, you go interview bands or politicians. and Those all- are two very different things. <laughs> well, that's the contrast, you know. Like, um, yeah. uh, like you know, if when I do, like, um, corporate stuff, I'll work for, a, um, uh, like, a, you know, a city council and they might want to do a two-camera shoot and interview a politician about the bridge that they're building. Mm-hmm. And then they want to put that out in their socials. Mm-hmm. And it's always a structured thing. They have, like, a list of questions... And yes. I just found it really, like, it's effective. It has a, it, there's a method to the madness of that. Yeah. Um, but I just found it very clinical. Yes. And non-personal. Yeah. 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 Cause you're not listening. You, I don't feel like I'm actively listening when mm. I'm like, oh, and I know what the next question is. So you're just waiting for them to finish that to then ask the next question. Whereas mm. if you don't go by that, I find you do listen so much more because you have to, otherwise you're up shit Creek. If you're like, oh shit, where are we? gonna go mm. next kind of thing so and the other exciting thing i find is um uh your guests they're always different every guest is different for oh, me yes they're all oh, different yes. um because we go through um at the start of the show like we we're talking about it off air before mm. like you know when someone's sitting down in the chair and you're about to do an interview and you're like all right this is going to take an hour but it's gonna be really quick you're not gonna even notice <laughs> that it's the hour's gone and you go through that all the time um but then i've got some guys that'll get on um, and uh, I've interviewed them so many times. Well, you know, had a conversation with them so many times. Mm. They, they just slip right into it. They just yeah. forget about the camera. They forget about the, the recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had, well, it, you know, I've had guests which I've been very nervous to interview because, like, mm. I look up to them in the industry. They're very um, experienced and well-known, and so those are always interesting. I always feel like I walk away being like, Rachel, that was shit. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, that old imposter monster. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. So. I, I get nervous before every podcast. Do you? Yeah, a little bit of nerves every time. Yeah. Oh, um, that's nice to know that you were nervous before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's about like, you know, because I, I don't know, I just want to make sure that I'm promoting the person right, that yeah. I'm, that I'm uh, trying to um, uh, steer and navigate where we can and then allow them to steer as well. Yes. And Because you know, sometimes I'm, I, I take control and I just need to relinquish control to have control. It's a bit of a paradox. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I think, you know, it's always what will be will be kind of thing. You mm. actually can't cover all bases in an hour long podcast. Mm. Um, and you could do a podcast with that person the next day and it could be completely different. Mm. So it's just like, yeah, you know, I like here is what I did. I'm going to put that out into the world and, and that's what it is. You know, I and I'm not a perfectionist, which is really helpful in the mm. creative industry because I feel like a lot of people are and they struggle to put things out there Mm. whether that be a podcast or their film online or something like that because they're like oh i just like sorry i just hit the mic Uh, that was uh uh, that's uh nine minutes (laughs) you're in the medium and i'm a i'm a (laughs) podcaster as well every guest does it every guest does it i talk with my hands as well so um i'm so sorry (laughs) well well, that's it we're just talking about imperfections right yeah i love the mic bumps i love the imperfections of it because it brings that authenticity to it it's not a structured thing it's a total 
fly by the seat of your pants, having a conversation, yeah. digging into things and, you know, uh, just grabbing onto bits of um, a subject matter and going, oh, what about this? You yeah. Know? yeah. I just find that, yeah, and that's where the nerves come in as well. It's a bit of excitement and nerves. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's a complete, it's an hour long improvisation almost, mm. which is, and um, improvisation terrifies a lot of people. <laughs> so. Well, I used to do that in drama school when I was, uh, um, uh, not drama school, sorry, but um, drama at school. At school. Drama yeah. at school. Drama at school. I've got to clarify that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and we used to do the improv. Yeah. Yeah. I was. I remember I was like 15 and I was wearing all black and I had to stand in front of different <laughs> schools and we'd do, you know, bananas, go, go, bananas, you know. What? <laughs> we got to do like moves. you got to go, but bananas, bananas, go, go, bananas. Are you doing that a drama game? Is yeah, that yeah, really? yeah. Drama sports, yeah. <laughs> it was I hilarious. Never... <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's heaps of them. Oh, my there's heaps God. Of them. Like, you there is the... so many. Of the... I've never heard of the banana one, though. <laughs> well, you've got to make your body look stupid. Okay. That's yeah. the idea. That's fair enough. And it's, that's why they call it Go Bananas. <laughs> I can't remember the other ones. There's a few other ones where you'd, like, um, you'd have to uh, say a line and then the other person says the line. Yeah. I suppose yeah. That's, that's the whole thing. of What was that show with uh, Drew Carey? Whose line is it anyway? Yes. That's what that's all about. That Those is drama exactly, sports, yeah. yeah, improvisation games. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm so bummed that, what do they, um, the Australian one, thank God you're here. I'm so bummed that that only lasted for a few years. Do you remember yeah, when they remember did that? that. Yeah, yeah. I think that that was such a great TV show. Mm. Um, I really enjoyed that. And that was like, they would have a celebrity guest come on and go into a scene and everyone in the scene knew what was going on, but they had no idea. Yeah. And so you just have to... But they like, walked onto a set. There was always a set. They yeah. had to walk onto the set and then uh, they would have a, a few points and that's it. Yes. And they had to navigate their way through it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which I think is um, am- like amazing. I think um, comedy with improvisation is such an amazing tool. Mm. Um, and um, yeah, that's how I generally like to work when I'm acting, um, especially in comedy is... Mm using improvisation it's i find that comedy doesn't flow as well and mind you this is not to say like just let the actor go completely off script Mm. and just like have a wank fest of what they want to say because actors will (laughs) (laughs) you got to reel them back in and be like no this is this is what we you know need to say Yeah, give them a bit of slack and then snap it back yes exactly but if you're like if you're wanting to just throw a line in here and there i think it becomes so much more natural especially if you're working with actors who are very experienced in comedy Mm -hmm. and know the techniques to use I think that becomes so much more hilarious because you know you look at like films with like Will Ferrell in it or something Mm -hmm. like that and you see like the like with Anchorman for example you see the BTS scenes of like the different takes that they would do Mm. or like things that they have added in and it's just really interesting to watch yeah, Those his his BTS scenes are hilarious. Yeah, and you so go, why good. didn't that make the movie? That was really good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. But what what's, what drives you as an actor? Like, why 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 have you gotten into acting? What 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 has pushed you into it, or what has um you know pulled you into it? Yeah, I feel like my whole story is a bit the same as everyone else, to be honest. But it's my story, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make one up. Um, but I, you know, it's something that I was always very interested in in high school, and mm. then going into uni, I was like, "What am I going to study?" Of course, performance, and I've just been very lucky in that I have parents who aren't in the industry, but who encourage me all the time to just keep going, mm. um, which is super helpful. You know, they've never told me that I should maybe try something else. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, yeah, it's always been something that I've pursued. And for a long while, I just thought it was something that I was like, oh, it's because I enjoy it. It's like, it's the thing that I like most mm. out of everything else that I do. Um, but then in the last few years, I've kind of realized that acting for me and filmmaking as well, mm. and podcasting actually, all of it. All of it. <laughs> all of it is just like, I, I just really love making people feel like someone else is feeling the same thing as them, that they're not alone in the yeah. world. And yeah, so how that relates to podcasting is that I love interviewing um, really well-known people and like people who are respected in the industry and being able to say to others like, hey look how this person started out and it's completely different to this other person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, look how many things they had to go through before they got to where they are now. 
and it just says like it's possible for you too. Yeah, totally. You know. Well, there's so, that saying that's out there. You know that um, an overnight success, and I just don't believe in that. Oh uh, no, it's not true. It, you need to um to you you may have got exposure at one point where you go, where did this person come from? Yeah. But there probably was ten years of work behind that moment. Yes. You know, so, very much so. So it's you got to be hungry. You do have to be hungry. And I think, um, yeah, in, in, in a sense with acting, that's kind of why I love acting as well. I just love people being able to relate and feel like, oh, okay. like. And also um, the thing that I love about comedy, which I always say, is that I love using comedy as an actor to um, breach hard subjects to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, like not necessarily every one of my films is going to be like that, but some of them are. And it's just like um, being able to laugh about something that is otherwise kind of a difficult thing to talk about mm. is something that is very interesting to me. So yeah. well, especially in these times, I think, um, yeah. I think um, uh, pointing towards like, um, you know, uh, comedy writers and comedians, um, you know, there's this, I think it's under threat because we're worried about what we can and can't talk about. Mm-hmm. And I think comedy is one of those things that allows allows you to go into topics that are taboo or difficult to talk about. And if we start nailing that down, I think we're going to lo- you know, th- I think these days we get more news from satire than we do the news. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is I find I- I- bizarrely ironic. Yeah, it definitely is. So, yeah, that's that's kind of what I guess, drives all of the things that I do, I guess. And also, I probably just really like seeing myself on camera and listening to my own voice. (laughs) Yeah, no, I've always said this, though. I I totally agree. Like, um, there's a a selflessness to it, but there's a selfishness to it as well. Um, It's, again, it's that paradoxical thing where you go, well, I want to go and entertain people, but if I don't do this, I'll go insane. Yeah. Um, exactly right. I especially find that on stage when I'm performing, mm. um, uh, in um, as a singer, uh, well as a guttural vocalist. Don't want to offend too many people out there. <laughs> um, but um, when you're up on stage, um, you are connected with the audience. But you're up there because I like you were talking about your parents before, right? Mm. My parents hated the fact that I did heavy metal. Yeah, they hate it. Uh, they they they've come around on it in the last like five years or so. I've been mm-hmm. doing it for twenty plus years, um, but. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I, the penny dropped with my old man once and I just said to him, you know, this is my therapy, man. Like, it makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. I can't live without it. If it's missing, there's a void. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the selfish part of it. But the, the selfless part of it is when people are, like, enjoying your entertainment. Yeah, exactly right. You're, and it's, yeah. And just a side note about heavy metal is that that genre of music is so technical. Mm. Like people just don't really realize it because it's not a genre that people normally pick to listen to. Mm. But it is very technically even, and I would call it singing. I mm. mean, come on, it is singing. <laughs> yeah, well, there is, I do do some melodic things. <laughs> Uh, but uh, there's Some a lot melodic of sc- tones. <laughs> there, yeah, but there is a lot of screaming. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yes, but yeah, I think yeah, um, and that that genre of music, um, I think has a lot of power to bring out emotions in people, mm. um, which is very interesting. So, yeah, yeah, I, I find it because I can, you know, I can um, sing as well, um, but when I do guttural vocals, it's such a honest thing for your body because you t- it's not just your your throat and your lungs that you're using you're using your stomach and you really have to uh, use your whole body yeah to get that sound out yeah it's a very difficult thing to do and it yeah. takes a lot of practice um but i, I kind of yeah I, I usually get pushed in or pulled into things like um i got pulled into that because i used to be on the schoolyard doing voices and this <laughs> guitarist goes man you could probably do guttural vocals after that voice you've just done like, I don't know. It's not something I'm really thought about. I listen to heavy metal, but yeah. I don't think I could perform it. And then I started performing it and I'm like, that was it. Mm. Um, same with filmmaking. As soon as I started filmmaking, that was it. I can't stop doing it. <laughs> Podcasting, can't stop doing it. I think you have an addictive personality. <laughs> yeah, perhaps I do. Perhaps I do. Um, Let's unpack that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, well, we can unpack it a little bit. Like, this is the uh, last podcast for uh, at least four podcasts uh, mm. in the future. Because, oh, not the, you know, not the very last. Um, where I'll be drinking beer because I'm going. Oh, excuse me for a smart march. So I'm going. Uh, I'm going to abstain smart from smart march. Did you just? Is that an actual thing, or did you come up with that? I phrase? just come up with that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Smart first. march. <laughs> Got to let the liver grow back. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I'll be doing it again in July. So dry July. Oh, good on you. Yeah. 
you know, I just feel like whenever I'm like, oh, I'm going to stop drinking, it actually makes me want to drink more. Whereas if I'm like, oh, you can drink as much as you want, I probably would once a week, maybe once every two weeks. Mm. So it's kind of like... Uh. It's a weird thing, isn't <laughs> it? It is a weird thing. Um, like, cause, um, it's like when someone tries to tell me what to do, it doesn't work. <laughs> And yeah. then I realise that I can't even tell myself what to do. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> if I go, no, you're not going to drink this week, I go, I'll go out and drink every night then. You can't tell me you what You can't to tell do. me what to do. <laughs> um, it's a bizarre thing, but no, I'm going to give it a red hot shot um, mm-hmm. just to um, basically see if I can do it. I'm disciplined in so many other ways. Yeah. And um, now that um, I've gotten through study and I've gotten um, more footing professionally and creatively, I've got more time. Mm. Um, because I, I'm so busy that mm. there's no time to drink. Exactly. All right. So that's why I come up with a Friday night shoot a podcast. And that way I, I can at least have a couple of drinks with someone, have a conversation. Yes. Uh, yeah. That's how limited time can be. Yeah. But now that um, the polarity or sort of like perhaps the ratio of my life has changed, mm-hmm. I've got a lot of free time and I, I was, I've programmed myself to have free time. That means, oh, I can go party a little bit. Mm. Now I've got free time. Because I'm partying all the time. And I'm like, oh, I recognize that in myself. I was like, yeah, you're going to have to pull that in. You're very disciplined in other ways, Roscoe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm giving myself, you know. Uh, <laughs> have <laughs> a, a stern, sit down a with stern, yourself. A stern talking to. <laughs> um, um, but um, yeah, and as well, like the industry sort of welcomes it, especially in the music industry and yes. the film industry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because uh, we work hard. It's a lot of work. Yeah. So you need that stress relief. You do. Um, I think something that I have really tried to implement in myself in the last few years, because I'm the same, I just tend to take on so much all the time, is that I think, um, you know, like how athletes obviously have to be at the peak of their health to perform at Mm. their peak. I kind of view it as that in that, like, if I'm wanting to complete all this stuff to the best of my ability it might not be perfect but Mm. to the best of my ability in that moment i have to really be looking after my health Mm. and drinking a lot and all that sort of stuff is not ridiculously healthy Mm. even just for the fact that you don't really get as much sleep as you should you know so and even when you do you're still a little bit tired yes yeah yeah, because your body is trying to process the alcohol you know Mm. and that's energy so yeah that's kind of I guess that's helped my mindset in the last few years is to be like Rachel if you want to do amazing things in your life in the film industry you need to treat it as like you are running a race yeah so it is enduring it is but mind you mind you I do have a few drinks every now and then I'm not just saying like oh you know I only eat protein and broccoli every day not at all like that but it's just being mindful because Mm. as you say the industry um, does have that culture of like oh we've finished a big shoot let's go and get drunk yeah it's very socially acceptable to do so yeah yeah yeah. and I think that's all well and good Mm. um, but I think just being mindful about actually what you are doing to your body and what you're expecting of your mind and your body Mm. doing these long shoots trying to creatively put out this content especially if you're working part-time which a lot of us are as well to fund these creative ventures we, anyway we can turn a dollar we turn a dollar yes that's, that's what i yeah, do yeah yeah so my whole life is a side hustle <laughs> <laughs> same <laughs> so yeah i think that that is really something that you know i think each creative should at some point think about that and mm. be like how like how do i want to show up for myself mm. in these creative ventures and what's the thing that I can give myself in order to be able to do my best. So Yeah, I guess it comes out you gotta do your homework. You do. Yeah, you gotta do you your really homework, do. you gotta do your research, you gotta read your script, you yeah. gotta write your script. Yeah. You gotta do your pre production. Like mm. like before you even get to a shoot, mm-hmm. there's so much work to do. Yeah. And when you've yeah. done the shoot, there's so much work to do. Yeah. Then you're in post production, right? And then yes. once you've finished your post production, then you've got to distribute. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of distribution, you've recently mm. made a comedy. Yes, um, that was a great segue, by the way. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is my uh, 68th podcast, so uh, I, I should be able to expert, know how to segue. Expert. Expert. <laughs> no, but uh, what was it? It was um, uh, nobody likes camping. Nobody likes camping. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Let me just sip my wine real quick. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Nobody Likes Camping, um, recently released on uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, So, guys, go and check it out. Um, Funny film. Uh, But you worked on that with uh, a big shout out to uh, one of my big compadres, Matthew C. Vella, Mm -hmm. and obviously uh, Luke Walker. Yes, yeah. yeah. All of, I think, actually, 
I'm pretty sure almost every single crew member was a Western Sydney mm. person. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. So That's that was cool. exciting. Oh, it's just, um, you know, it is exciting because the film industry is expanding out here, which I think is super important because mm. we're getting different stories to what is just in Sydney CBD. Which yeah, is, I can tell yeah. you a lot of stories about that. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the stories you get from the CBD are um, about the damsel in distress. There, <laughs> there is a, um, a, a, a knight in shining armour mm -hmm. that rescues a woman. Yeah. That's the story every time. Yeah. Um, from uh, Western Sydney, like you, you throw a dart at a genre or mm. throw a dart at a, at a narrative line and will, that's that's essentially what you get. You don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. Like, um, for instance, when we were um, doing Made in the West for um, uh, during COVID, we were expecting bleak, dark, like, um, content because people were isolated and depressed. Yeah. That's not what happened at all. Yeah. Yeah. West, the Western Sydney artists, like, took it up a different way. Um, I found that actually absolutely profound. Um, mm. Totally surprised me. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think um, the... I can tell you a lot about the data. Like, if you look at um, Western Sydney artists, there's a lot more artists in Western Sydney than there is anywhere else in the country, rivaled by uh, uh, West Melbourne, actually. Interesting. So, so those two um, regions in uh, Australia are competing artistically. Yeah. Uh, more uh, rappers, more bands, more actors, more directors, more writers. There's so much content coming out of Western Sydney. It's ridiculous. Wow. And that's now. Yeah. If you look at the projection of it, it's growing exponentially. Mm. Um, like if you've been to um, Maine and the West for a couple of years, you'll notice it. You'll notice that um, trajectory. Mm -hmm. um, it's getting, um, it's a beast that is out of our control. <laughs> Um, which is, you know, in a good way. <laughs> well, yeah, it's scary at the same time because now you have to do it. Like, there's no, yeah. oh, you know, I'm just going to do an email here and there, or mm -hmm. um, not that I email anybody. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everyone's like, I've never gotten an email. I've never gotten an email from Moscow. <laughs> Usually, it just rings me at three in the morning. Going, hey, man, you want? I've got this idea. I've got an idea. Um, I, I'm just uh, having an inside joke there. Um, our producer tonight, um, uh, Misty. Uh, is the uh, yes. manager. I of, like to send emails. Uh, yeah, she sends a lot of emails. <laughs> Thousands of them, actually. Um, but, um, you know, there's always something to do. Yeah. Um, uh, like we, you know, sometimes you're in sleep mode. I try to get Made in the West into sleep mode so I can concentrate on other projects. Mm -hmm. But it tends to wake up all the time. I'm always working on it. Yeah. But it is a labour of love. It really is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but you were in um, uh, Made in the West last year with um, one conversation yeah. where you were marrying a zombie. I was. That was actually one of my favourite shoots I think I've ever done, mm. which is a big call. Um, but it was such a fun music video. The song itself is a great song. It mm. played on Triple J recently, actually, which yeah, is did, yeah. amazing. Um, so the song is by um, a duo called Boulevard mm -hmm. um, featuring a singer called Little Green. Mm -hmm. um, they're all great artists. But yeah, it was really like, and this is a kind of, it just proves like how networking and working with your friends really pays off. So Originally, because it was shot by Luke Walker, mm. who we mentioned before. Another, another shout out, Luke. Another shout out. Thank you, Luke. Um, I guess one every podcast, actually. Yeah. <laughs> He's a busy boy. You're a busy boy, I'm Luke. I'm not surprised. <laughs> but um, he hit me up and he said, oh, we need um, a character for this music video. You'll only be needed for an hour or two. Um, you know, it should be super easy. And I was like, of course, like, mm. I'll do it. I wouldn't do roles like that for anyone else other than my close friends mm. where I can help them out. Because you do get to a point in your career where you're like, this is not benefiting me in any way. I need to do the roles that yeah, are going to... Yeah, it's not adding, it's subtracting. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyways, then I think about two weeks before the shoot, he calls me up and he says, so the girl that we were going to have as the main girl... Um, she's pulled out. So you're going to do that one now. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I was back around now. I'm the lead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which is, you know, very nice. Thank you so much. Um, but the concept was really cool. Like mm. the two guys are, were in full zombie makeup for over 12 hours. Um, are we going to clip of this? Can we get a clip of this, Misty? Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was just such a, an easy, but enjoyable shoot. Mm. Um, a lot of fun. And Luke and I afterwards were like spitting around ideas of like, we could make like a sequel to this because it was such a cool concept. So yeah. Yeah. A whole bunch of um, uh, zombies in, uh, uh, were they zombies straight away? I can't remember. They were zombies straight away. They were zombies yeah. straight up? Mm, yeah. So you've got it there. Is but, that um, okay? Yeah, you've got it there. Yeah. There we go. Uh, there we go. 
There it is. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's the that's yeah, logo. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, they're, yeah. they're zombies right away. Um, spoiler alert, at the end, we get married and um, he tries to turn me into a zombie and I'm like, no, I don't want to. Yeah, that's right. And you then, you ran away uh, screaming. Yes, yeah. and then I end up <laughs> murdering him. <laughs> well, guys, definitely so, go and check this out. Yeah. Um, uh, Boulevard, um, One Conversation. Mm, um, yeah. yeah uh, featuring uh, Rage Baker. Me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was there. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. but just going back to um, your, your comedy as well, just yes, to, uh, yeah. to get that out there a bit more, um, yes. where can we find nobody likes camping so that's on youtube that's on matt's youtube channel but you can literally just type in nobody likes camping to Mm. youtube and it'll pop up Mm -hmm. um which is great um and we've had a great response it also um so it's myself and neil kolhatka who is very big online he's a he's a comedian yeah he's a stand-up comedian and he also has a very big online following Mm -hmm. um for his comedy stuff he does online um but he's also a, a great actor as well a great comedy actor um so it was yeah it was great to have him on board it was kind of like when we pitched him the idea and he said yes matt and i were like wow we pulled it off (laughs) do we expect him to say no because we're like oh (laughs) okay but um that was great he and i asked neil i was like what made you say yes because we just emailed him Mm. and said this is us this is a script you Mm. know would you be interested and he said to me, it actually sounded like you were pitching the project to me and it wasn't just a generalized email, mm. which was true. We actually only pitched it to Neil. And mm. then when we were going to get a response from him, we would then go forward looking at other casting. Mm. So it kind of just worked out. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good when it works out because it's sometimes like um, doing what we do. Mm. You don't always get what you want. No, you don't. And it's uh, bizarre when you do uh, mm-hmm. get what you want. So, yeah, I love it when that happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, that was... I think that um, just having him on board and um, the way that we work together and we just get on as friends as well. Mm. So, um, that really helped the production because mm. with comedies, if you don't have two people or the, a group of people that mesh comedically, mm-hmm. it can go very wrong. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, definitely go and check it out on, uh, it's, uh, uh Velomat Films, if my memory, uh, serves me well. Velomat Sorry, Films. Matt. I can't remember what Pretty your sure channel is. is. <laughs> I've, I've definitely subscribed, Velomat buddy. Films. I've definitely subscribed. Misty's nodding, so I'm gonna... <laughs> Velomat Films. Films. Nobody <laughs> likes camping. Go and check it out. Um, now you guys d- definitely did a good job on that. Um, and uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. So if you, uh, well, let's go to the next segue. Uh, have you got any projects that you're working on at the moment? I do. Um, it's an exciting... Can we talk about it? Um, I don't know. <laughs> so I... Let's, I, let's work out our limits, how just, far we can go. Yeah, I'll just kind of tell you because it is a script that I've written. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically... Um, and this is also like kind of um, a very interesting story because um, it's being co-produced by a production company that I met interviewing them on my podcast. Um, handy. Yeah, so <laughs> handy. And I didn't, you know, at the time they had actually approached me and said, you know, we love your podcast. We'd love to be on it. Um, this is us. And they're a really reputable production company. Mm-hmm. It's Visible Studios in Melbourne. Yeah. Um, they're ARIA nominated. They've been at Cannes as well um, mm-hmm. in 2016. So um, they're just there. And they're like very lovely people as well. Um, yeah, that's always nice when they're easy to work with. Yeah. So, or, we've all been through the horror stories of oh, people that's hard to work with. Oh my God, yes. And I just feel like sometimes with producers and directors, like they're all talk and they're just a bit wanky. Yeah. And I just can't. I just can't with those people. So um, it just so happened that that episode went really well and they asked me what I was working on and I've been writing this pilot for mm. a series for about three years now. Do you now. want a bit of a top up? Oh yes. No, give me a top up. Thank you. I'll yeah, keep yeah. talking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll just ramble on. Uh, That's what we're here for. <laughs> yes, true. <laughs> um, You're on the pagey train. I know. Oh my God. <laughs> Dream come true, guys. Yeah. <laughs> you can retire now. Yes, yeah, I'm done. Um, I won't be doing oh, anything more. Oh man, I just more. totally overfilled oh, that. Oh no. Don't and drink all I that. Drove. Yeah, don't drink all that. Okay. I went a bit nuts. That's Sorry. okay. I'm on my I'm on my full license, obviously, because I'm 28 years old. So <laughs> you'd expect that. But well, um, not these days, though. Oh, true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. People are more um, public transport commuters these days. True, true. 
But regardless of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so um, a Melbourne production company. Melbourne production company. Um, yeah, so they asked me what I was working on. And this actually comes back to our point of doing things that um, I want to do that make people feel like they're not alone in the world. Mm. So um, I wrote this pilot and a series Bible. So it's basically the pilot script with... Um, five other episodes that are mapped out mm. and the series treatment for that. Now, um, I have to warn you, the the series, it's a black comedy, but the content is very dark because it's based on a true story that happened to me. Mm. Um, and the story is that um, basically in 2015, I think it was, um, I went on a few dates with a guy mm. that I'd met off a dating app and, um, and decided that I didn't like, I wasn't really feeling it. Um, and so when he asked me for another date, I just said, look, like you're very lovely, um, but I'm just not feeling it. And um, he ended up killing himself that night. Holy shit, Rachel. Yeah, yeah. So obviously very heavy content. I am okay. I'm okay. I, wow. I've dealt with it. Um, but at the time, I was 24 when that happened. That's really heavy. Yeah. And I wasn't mentally equipped to deal with it in the best of ways. And so I... don't I, think at any age you'd be mentally equipped to deal with something like that. True. But yeah. Um, yeah, I went through a lot of drinking, a lot of casual sex, mm. all that sort of stuff to kind of... I guess, numb what I was feeling. Yeah, a bit of escapism um, after something like that. Yeah, yeah. And then I decided that I wanted to write a series on it. Um, so. Well, I, I could totally resonate with that. Um, yeah. to, 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 um, uh, to really um, uh, put it to the floor in, in this regard, like um, uh, we were talking about me doing heavy metal before. Mm. And I was talking to my father about it being therapeutic and, you know, um, I, you know uh, being an ex-soldier and serving overseas, mm. a lot of what I've written is about my experiences overseas and my um, post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. and, and in some cases, acute stress. Yeah. So we were talking about there's acute stress. Like you're not, that's not a post-traumatic stress situation. Like that is a situation where you're immediately stressed mm -hmm. and, and, and anxious and depressed immediately. Yeah. That's a, that's an immediate trigger. Um, so um, I, 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 I totally tip my hat to, to um, go and write that story and go and, and, and do that because that's something that needs to come out of you. Yeah, 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 definitely. Because the universe delivered it to you. So you got to go send it back. Exactly. And you know? that's exactly how I felt. I kind of felt like I could have gone, oh, well, it's me. Um, or taken it as like, actually, I've been given this opportunity to put something out. Mm. So the other people that have gone through this, because we often see content that is created from the person's perspective who is suffering from depression. Mm. Um, but I have rarely seen content where it's, the aftermath of when they do kill themselves, what happens to the people around them and how it affects those people. Mm. And so I think that's really important. And the, I can't tell you the amount of people that I've just been casually telling them about this script idea mm. and they've said, oh, I actually had something similar happen to me or mm. I know someone who had something similar. It's just, it's actually mind boggling. And then it's also mind boggling that we haven't delved into this subject that much in... Well it's, very, well, it's very taboo. Um, it's yeah. in, like in television, um, any medium really, um, mm. suicide is taboo. No one likes to talk about it because they're worried about invoking it. Yes. Right? So there's a sphere about that. Um, but as someone that's also experienced um, friends that have, um, uh, you know, uh, taken their own life, um, I, I can certainly say that suicide is a transfer of pain. Mm -hmm. Like their pain is over, but now they've yeah. transferred that pain to you. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a difficult thing to process for anyone. That's what I was saying to you, like 24, 48, it don't matter. Yeah. That's a hard thing to deal with. Yeah. Um, and I think um, the most, as an artist, the most therapeutic way that you can um, compartmentalize, process and unpack that mm. is to write it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and as someone has been through that, um, look, uh, Chills talking about this, this is amazing. Um, uh, someone that um, I, I, I processed the whole war, uh, the, you know, the wars that I fought in um, through music and through mm -hmm. heavy metal. And it's something that when I go and perform it now, like even th that's a set that I wrote like a couple of years ago. And when I go and perform those songs now, it couples me to it, mm -hmm. but in a positive way. Yeah. So when you see that content out there, when you're... You know, when you're writing it, it's leaving your hands. It's literally leaving you. Mm -hmm. When you're singing it, it's literally leaving you. Mm -hmm. And But the thing is, the irony of it is it will never fully leave. That will always be there. But at least it won't have the weight that it first had. Oh, yes. It, it's distribution is different. So, yeah. again, like my heart out to you, my, 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 and I tip my hat as well. Like that is a, 
such a um, a marvelous way to 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 deal with such a such a tragedy. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. And it kind of also comes back to what I was saying about comedy as a means for like approaching these mm. subjects because you're right, it is a very taboo subject and even like um I know a lot of people that um, have had loved ones, like family members, especially parents of kids who have, mm. um, you know, taken their own life. They don't actually like using the phrase commit suicide mm. because it implies that something wrong has been done. Mm. However, for me, I'm kind of like, I don't, I don't agree with that. Mm. Um, so there are so many, like, even just saying that people are probably going to be like, mm. well, fuck her. Can I say fuck? Yeah, yeah, you okay, can totally good. say fuck. <laughs> We're on the internet, man. We can okay. get away with anything. Sorry, I heart radio. I know you guys love me, but I do label it as explicit. So. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Well, fuck. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Fucking deed. Shit, man. You're blowing my mind. Like, gosh. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but it, so it is taboo. Like, people have different opinions about it and mm -hmm. it's such a hard subject. And so to make... If I were to make that series as a drama, mm. people would walk away from it being like fuck that's heavy like that is like the weight of it is going mm. to be on them and that's not what i want i want them to be able to actually look at this but also be able to laugh about it like something that i find absolutely hilarious is that <laughs> when i was going through a period um of um drinking myself silly mm. i um went and bought a bottle of vodka and took it home and I sat on the lounge drinking it, but I was watching the musical Chicago. Oh, yeah. So I was singing along <laughs> to the musical Chicago. I can totally Chicago. relate to that, by the way. Maybe not the musical side of things, but yeah. like singing and drinking. Yeah, yeah. Can, yeah. and yeah. just that tableau just cracks me up. Mm. Like this person who is so <laughs> wounded decides that they're going to go like get drunk singing this musical um so there's like funny moments like that i also i was going to therapy at the time for um trauma therapy mm. and i was so convinced in my mind that my therapist wanted me to cry mm. and so my objective for all of my therapy session was to not cry which yeah. is just like super weird no it's not i can relate to that as well because then there's part of you that doesn't want to be vulnerable yes, in that situation yeah. Um, you know, you get choked up or you get, um, you know, you might get goosebumps about the situation, but there's that one final straw that you go, no, nope, not yeah. going to emotionally release that way. Yeah. And I, I especially as someone who, who sings, when I've been very depressed, mm. things that have lifted me out of that, like that dark hole have been like getting drunk and like singing heavy metal music. Yeah. Like, um, cause I've got a, like a, a little rehearsal studio down the road. Oh yeah. And I can like, it's an industrial area. And so I've you got, can just go to town. I've got 1,800 watts that can just blast out of a room mm. through a microphone, drum kit, a um, couple of guitars. Well, there's 20 guitars that we've got in there. You, you know, pick your weapon, right? Yeah. Um, and, I, um, I, and actually, another mate of mine who's also a veteran, I take him down there every couple of months and, and we do covers. And, yeah. Um, I, I just notice every time I do, every time he gets a bit down, I go, it's time to take him out to the studio again. Because mm. um, he's relapsing a little bit in his depression and, and post-traumatic stress. I'm yeah, like, I've, yeah. got, I've got solutions for that. Yeah. Um, but it becomes a bit of an identity crisis as well. Mm. Like you start to question who you are. Mm -hmm. And that, I think that's the heaviest part of being through a trauma like that mm. is, is questioning your own self. Like, you know, what did I do? Or what was it that I said? Or what, oh, yes. What if I played yes. it differently? What if, what if, what if, what if, what yeah. if, what if, right? Yeah. Um, so it becomes a bit of an identity crisis. So I think music has a resonance to it. It has a vibration to it. Especially mm. stuff like Chicago, right? It's all this <laughs> yeah. like... Um, some sexy jazz. Sexy <laughs> jazz, right? Um, um, all these sexy looking people um, doing this, um, you know, positive but poignant uh, music, right? Um, and then singing along with that with a bottle of vodka. Yeah. Um, did you glitch it in shot glasses or were you just doing it straight from the bottle? No, I was mixing it with Solo. I wasn't doing oh, it straight great. from the bottle. I was mixing. Come on, guys. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't think I could. I, I, <laughs> I think I've reached an age where I can get away with that. Like, um, my tolerance for alcohol is insane. That's why... I'm the opposite now, except for whiskey, because I mm. love bourbon. So, I love just, like, having my little glass with the ice and doing these ones yeah. and drinking that straight. Anything else, if you're like, let's do shots, I'm like, absolutely not. Mm. I'm 28. I've 
hit my peak of drinking like two years ago. Oh, no, give it time. Give it time. No, <laughs> I will vomit. I will be vomiting all of the next day. I used to be like that when I was 28. It's totally different now. What I'm Don't saying. tell now, me that. <laughs> now that I'm 40, I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, vodka, straight up. Let's do it. Um, yeah. But uh, no, I can't do tequila anymore. No. I can't do tequila shots anymore. No. Um, but I know, again, though, that's why I like, I, I go back to, this is why I need to abstain. Because mm, I need to allow yeah. my body to recover and perhaps just rediscover myself um, as a sober person. Like, um, I, I definitely um, have been burning, or I don't just burn the candle at both ends. I take the candle and throw it into a fire. I... I, Most I, efficient way. Yeah, it is. And uh, <laughs> my recommendation to people is always, you know, just stay lightly drunk. Don't get, don't get pissed. Stay lightly drunk. Um, but uh, that's a terrible way to look at things. Mm, um, mm-hmm. it's, not, it's not conducive. Like, like, don't get me wrong, here we are drinking on the show, but um, I think you need to have breaks. And whether it's yeah. uh, a weekly break or a daily break or whatever it is, you need spaces of different um, psychological awareness. Yeah. Because it's time to drink. There's definitely times to drink. Yeah. Um, at a wedding, time to drink. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, at a funeral, time to drink. Um, although, although I did get criticised at the last funeral I went to because I took a hip flask with me. Um, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I got criticised for that. Some haters out there. Yeah, man. They're like, do you always carry that hip flask? I'm like, what do you think? Of course not. <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I go to yeah, when I'm shopping at Kmart. I'm like. Oh. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we love Kmart though. We love Kmart. <laughs> I just love the fact that it's 24 hours. I know. I love it. You can go and buy cups at three in the morning. I know. You want to change up your throw pillows? You can. Yeah, you can. You can you totally can. rearrange your whole home. Yeah. Uh, your whole house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's funny. Like, there's one thing that I always think, which is like, I really dislike the word hustle and I hate when people use it in our industry. Mm. And it's purely because I think it... Um, makes the negative connotation of it. Yes, it makes people think that they have to constantly work mm. and be constantly going and going and going until they reach their goal, mm. which you will never reach your goal that way. Or mm. you will reach it and you will be burnt out and then it will fall away. Mm. So I think like, you know, you do have to have rest from drinking and there is times to drink. There is times to hustle, mm. um, definitely, but it's not a full-on sprint. It's a marathon. You know? Yeah, that's true. Well, I, I am uh, guilty of using the word hustle a lot. Um, that's okay. It's yeah. just like for me personally, I don't like using it because I just don't like putting that on myself. Mm. Um, Mainly when it comes to pool though. When I oh, play well, pool. <laughs> that's completely different. You should hustle when you're playing when pool. When you play pool, it's not just about what's going on in the game. It's what's happening off yes, the table Yes, the as hustle well. of the pool game. Yeah, it's a psychological game. It's a oh. game of chess, not a game of pool. <laughs> I, I, well, uh, yeah, I own a lot of hats, right? So um, okay. when I'm in a pub, um, and someone's playing pool, especially someone who's a bit mouthy. Like, hey, you want to go in the pool? Yeah. You know, you play a bit of possum with them. Don't show them your full skills yet. And then right. they'll start saying, hey, do you want to play for drinks? Because then they're on, a, they're on a high. Right. You know, I'll tell you what. If I lose, I'll buy you and your mates drinks. Mm. But if I win, I get the hat. <laughs> and they go, okay. So uh, every once in a while, I come home with a new hat. And Missy's like, ah, I've been playing pool mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I hope um, you wash them, though. Uh, no, I don't wear them. They're, oh, they're, tro- okay. they're total trophies. <laughs> Some of them really, they're all garbage, but um, I like, <laughs> it's not the point of a garbage hat. It's not the point. It's not the point. Um, but so yeah, I do, I, I get your point though about the hustle. Yeah. Because it has this um, uh, criminal connotation to it as well. Like mm. I'm doing things that, uh, you know, when you say I'm hustling, you could be saying that oh, I'm doing things illicitly. Um, yes. And um, when I'm in, f- you know, film hustling, for instance, people will use that phrase. Like you've got to, yeah. Um, every day I'm hustling, hustling, right? Hustle and grind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but um, it's not just that. It's more than that. And to sim- to put it in that compartment, yeah, I think I think you bring me across. You bring oh, me across. Uh, not to use a phrase like that. Hmm. Um, well, it's just I because it's not criminal. It's not criminal in any way. It's, it's just not. It's not. You're just burning and the midnight oil. Yes, and I think if you want filmmaking and being in the creative industry or the entertainment industry to be your life, then why? Like, why is that a hustle? Why is that a hustle, you know? Shouldn't it, shouldn't it be fun? It should be. It should just be, you know, it should be ebbs and flows of like sometimes you do work harder and then sometimes you break and enjoy the other things in your life, you know, especially just, and I think it's so important to have breaks of like whether that be a week or a month or a year mm. from your creative career because if you are basing all of your work from life experiences say which we should be taking bits and pieces that Mm. we've learned how are you going to have those life experiences if you're just hustling 
and hustling and hustling at your career yeah, you're but always not at living it. life. You yeah, know? yeah, I get your point. So. Like you're always at it. You're always at the coal face, always chipping yeah. away, chipping, 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 chipping away and yeah. not actually zooming out and going, what does the mountain look like at the moment? Yeah. You know, they've been chipping away all this time. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, totally get, I totally get that. Mm. Um, I think um, family is one of those things, right? Because, mm. because we're like working and then doing a creative um, art, mm. it, 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 something has to lose. And I usually yeah. find the first thing that loses is your family because mm. they go, well, they love me, they'll forgive me. Right, they'll they'll forgive that I'm not there for this moment because mm-hmm. I've got to go and shoot this movie. Mm. Um, but then it gets to a point if you're hustling all the time, then you've got no family time because you're constantly chipping away. Yeah, um, I'm yeah. so guilty of it, uh, Rachel. I really am. Like I, oh, same. But you know, you're aware of it. So yeah, no, uh, and especially in the last few years, I've become aware of it. Um, I uh, if I get a free day, like we go, I've got nothing scheduled. Like cause I've got the calendar upstairs, and like it fills up very quickly. <laughs> yep. You know, I've got to go do this shoot, got to go and do this um, uh, promo for someone, got to go do this podcast, I've got band practice, got a gig, I've got to write this on this day, there's deadline, 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 and all yeah. of a sudden your calendar's full. Yeah. You're like, oh, um, where did I schedule going and see my family? Yes. You know? And, yeah. And how could, if you don't have experience with your family and friends, how do you have any content to write about? You don't. You just don't. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I think you, you've brought me across the bridge of the, the negative connotations of hustling. <laughs> um, I'm so excited. That's all I wanted out of tonight, really. Well, well, I, say, well I do say to young people, I go, I try to invigorate them like, you know, we've got to hustle, man. We've got to get this done. We've got, there's yeah. a sense. Of, the word hustle has the sense of urgency to it. Yes. There's a sense of urgency. Like, we're in a rush. Mm. And when you're in a rush, you don't exactly have time to stop and look around and enjoy yourself. Yes, that's very true. I understand why you would say, and to be completely honest, in the moments where you're on a set and you are like, we're an hour behind schedule and we need to get this done, Mm. I'd probably say the same thing. We need to hustle. But yeah, it's just understanding, I guess what the word actually implies to someone else. Well, I look at it another way as well. Like, you might be staying at a hotel, right? Here's a story that's happened to me before. Like, we saw a, 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 a vase, a vase. Are you a vase or vase person? Vase. 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 I'm a vase. vase person. We saw a vase. That a would, vase. A vase. A vase. <laughs> we saw a vase that would really like in a movie. Mm. And um, uh, when we were at the hotel, we were like, hey, can we borrow your vase? That's a little bit of a hustle because you've got to, like... All of a sudden, put on the smile. Like, I really love your place here. It's really nice. And we're making this movie and this uh, vase would look really good in the background. Can we borrow it for the day? Mm. You know, you, you're that, sometimes I look at it, the hustle that way. Yeah. But there's nothing nefarious about that. You're just doing some salesmanship. Yeah. You know, but um, yeah, yeah. Again, though, not to harp on it too much. Um, <laughs> um, there is a negative connotation that is a bit um, nefarious or a little bit in a rush to do things. So. Yeah, I think it's just, especially when you're in the indie side of your career um there is this mentality of like say like you know if we were to sit down and have a conversation and I was to ask you what you're doing and then you ramble off all of these things I feel like oh shit Roscoe's doing so much stuff and I'm not doing anything you know I better hustle and keep up with all of these Mm. other people but I don't see you're not talking about the days that you have off you know, because I've asked you what you're doing. Mm. So it's, yeah, I just I just really think that it's such a, a mentality in the indie industry that we should be conscious always at of. It. Always at it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't need to be always at it. I think in the last year, I've taken more time off of my career mm. than I have ever. And more things have happened in my career than they ever have. So it's like... Well, I've well, got advice for someone in this this sort of ilk, right? Like um, I have um, uh, friends that go, Ross, how do you do all of this? Mm. How do you do all of it? I go, I do it incrementally. It's not yes. like... like um, Setting up a band is way harder than running one. Mm-hmm. Like um, um, writing a song is way harder than performing one. Mm-hmm. Like you, you know, you got to build. You know, you got to pick your target, yep. build it, and then once it's running, it's running. Yeah. Like yeah. it's harder to set up a festival than it is to run one. I can mm-hmm. tell you that. Yeah. Changing a venue that's really hard. Once you've got a venue, you're just running the template over mm-hmm. and over and over again mm-hmm. with little nuances and changes and advancements, of course. Yeah. But essentially, it's not. There's a difference between starting something and running something. Yes. So I, I try to tell people it's incremental. Like, how, how does Rachel Baker be an actor and a podcaster and a writer all at the same time? That, that, that's not, it didn't happen at the same time. No, not that, at all. That happened in stages. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, um, when we think about the goals that we want for our entire life and not just our career, like, you know, 
my goal is to have a partner mm. or I do have a partner. <laughs> but Big shout to, out. To keep him, <laughs> <laughs> to lock him down. <laughs> no, but, you know, and to also have a good relationship with my family, to have a career that I am proud of, mm. to be financially stable. Mm. So why am I focusing all of my time on my career, mm. you know? Yeah, there's other things to life. There's other things to life. And if you, like, I think, yeah, it's so important to have goals throughout your entire life and not just let the creative career consume you, mm. you know? So, yeah. And it's an easy trap to fall into, especially if you're younger. You're like, mm. I want to be a star. I want to do this. I want to do that. And, you're, and you've got to just realise, hey, guys, if you're out there listening, you just got to realise that it's, a, it's you've got another way at it. Um, and as well, don't get me wrong, there's some people that just like scream out of the atmosphere and one, one fair chronic blunt. And they, that's great. Mm -hmm. But that, that's a shooting star that you rarely see once a year, right? Yeah. yeah. The rest of us, we, you know, don't get me wrong, the old, as the old saying goes, let's shoot for the moon. If we miss, we'll shoot for the stars, right? And I, I just think, yeah, that, that, that gives pause, right? Mm. By going, oh, it's not a hustle. It's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And that lifestyle, you know, has other attributes to it. Yeah. Like spending time with your friends, spending time at home. Yes. Just watching something on Netflix, like, oh. I, 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 there was a year that I didn't watch a movie. Really? As a filmmaker, there was a year there that I didn't watch a movie. Mm. Like, how terrible is that? Yeah, it's... That's terrible. That's a tragedy. It's, well, I mean, what are you, yeah, where are you getting your, I guess, um... Inspirations uh, from. Inspiration from, you and where, know? And where am I just like um, sitting down and letting go of anything and just being mm. entertained by um, by some media or some product or a song or, a, you know, it, it gets to a point where you can't constantly be creating. Mm -mm. Um, and don't get me wrong, it's addictive. Like writing is addictive, um, making films is addictive, but it's not, it's not something you do every second of every day. No, no. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the other thing that I... <laughs> and your competitors, if you think, oh, but my competitors are going to be doing that, they'll burn out, mate. They will. Not burn out. And I think social media doesn't really help with that because, you know, we have people in the industry who are taking a photo of their computer screen when they're typing up a script and being like, mm. just writing my script today. And you see that on their Instagram story and go, fuck, like, well, I'm not writing a script today. Mm. And it's just super unhelpful. So, mm. yeah, it's just, it's just stepping away and being aware of those things and being like, okay, well, I'm not getting caught up in this. I'm, well, I'm a, doing what I'm doing. Well, it's funny you bring that up. The, the um, social media aspect of things, the voyeurism, because mm. that's essentially what you're talking about is the voyeuristic aspects of that, people peering into other people's lives and seeing what they're doing. Yes. Or Because you, only, you don't ever show the negativity online. No. It's all the glamour. Mm -hmm. It's all glamour. Mm -hmm. uh, like, we, um, like, for instance, we had a, a, a billboard in Liverpool for Made in the West. And, um, you know, people would have walked past that and just, oh, yeah, billboard, right? Yeah. And then um, we all stood in front of it and took a photograph of it and put mm. it online. Mm -hmm. And I said to my crew, I said, that's what we'd got the billboard for. And they're like, what do you mean? <laughs> I go, that's an $800 photo. Because mm -hmm. no one's looking at this billboard. Mm -hmm. They're just walking by it because they're busy going to work. Yeah. But now that we put it online, people go, they've got a billboard. Yeah. So you set this idea of, oh, because you have a billboard, clearly you must be making it. Yeah. You made it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, we made the billboard look bigger than what it did in the shot. Yeah. To give it more uh, prominence. Yeah. And you realize that, yeah, this is this social media game. It may have uh, an immediate uptake of mm -hmm. that. Oh, well, look at us. Got, we've got, a, you know, we've got 100 likes, 200 likes, 1,000 likes, whatever it is. But you realize that, was the billboard worth it? Yeah. You know I what mean, I mean? Just I, for the social media aspect of it. Like, I don't know the answer to that question, but. I understand uh, because it was for Made in the West, I can definitely, from a marketing perspective, respect that that would have had an effect. Mm. However, if I'm going to go and put a picture of myself on a billboard mm. and then take a photo in front of it and put that on my Instagram, completely different thing, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, that is right, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, now you're talking about the focal point of that, 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 that art. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know, when we're at band practice, I take a selfie and I'm like, hey, I'm at band practice. <laughs> Love me. Just Love so me. you know. Our album's I'm in coming a band. out soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a band or like I'm, I'm totally like singing a band and then like we're hopefully going on tour soon. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, but um not hustling. Not hustling. So not hustling. Just, you know, it's just, a lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's it, that's it, you know. So I don't I like as I said, like I don't know the answer to those questions. Like we're we're like um in, in the social media game, we're like we are in this thing. 
that we don't know what it is. Mm. Like even science fiction didn't predict social media. <laughs> no. Like in Star Trek, there was no like they had the mobile phone, like beam me up, Scotty, right? They had the yeah. mobile. They even had the flip boat open phone. Yeah, predicted. which we're past. We're, past we're, we're way past that. Yeah. Now we've got these computers that are in our pockets that one day are going in us. Like one day the computer is going in. Once they get that Neuralink stuff sorted, oh, man. Oh no, thank you, no thank you. But what about if you know in twenty years' time, mm. where kids are doing it and they go, "You're so old fashioned. Why wouldn't you just plug into it? Everyone else does." It's the same thing with social media at the moment, where baby boomers are like, "Why do you bother taking a photograph of your food?" Yeah. Why would you bother? Yeah. But some people do. Yeah. And I think that thing will repeat itself. That's where history repeats itself. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Like. I guess, to think that the majority of society isn't having these conversations and isn't worried about the effects of social media and it's kind of just like going along with, oh, this is a new thing that I can have, so I'm going to have it. Mm. Um, but yeah. yeah, I don't know. On, online, though, you see a lot of like, um, you know, doom scrolls. You see a lot of like, um, uh, uh, what's the word? Like, um, uh, to be offensive people mm-hmm. are out there to be offensive to deliberately be trolling yeah like um i don't you know and you know the whole we've got this device right that um can look through the center of the earth that the stars are on the other side and there's dudes out there sending unsolicited dick pics to people right well, or we got, solicited we don't know i don't know well, i don't know I've, I've, never, I've, I've had this conversation with a few women like do you ever ask for a dick pic they go no nah, i never asked one no no i've never asked for one of those um <laughs> But, um, you know what I mean? Like, we've got this technology that's so powerful. Yes. And we do the most... And we're using it for... The most ridiculous notions. My favourite video online is this. uh, It's chicken in jeans. And it's this chicken running around in a tiny pair of jeans. Um, So... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I think one of my favourite ones uh, recently was this guy that was having this existential crisis. And someone just shook hands with him. He's like, how are you going, Jeff? He goes, how am I going? Where am I? Am I just going to be giving way to the um, homo elitus? You know, he goes into this whole dialogue and yeah. then at the end of it goes, yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> like, I love that sort of stuff. Like there's these, these like snippets of um, short entertainment. But um, when I was younger, I like, I'd look at things like cops. I'd watch cops yeah. because it's, um, you know, um, uh, what would you call it? Like um, shock porn or like um, outrage. Mm-hmm. It's outrage porn, right? I'm outraged. Help, let that guy go, man. He didn't mm. do anything wrong. <laughs> um, and then, you know, before the whole like, because um, uh, yeah, there was the uh, fellow that um, Floyd, I think yeah. his name was over in the States, that was that was murdered by that policeman. Yeah. And even before that, I was watching all of these cop videos. And then mm. when that event happened, I reflected on myself and I've gone, why do you watch that, Ross? Yeah. Why do you watch that? And I go, I'm entertained by it. Clearly entertained by it. Mm -hmm. Why am I entertained by it? And then I realized, because it's outrageous. And then I started doing some research into it. Do you know that there's parts of your brain that will, uh, when you're outraged, your brain is more active than when it thinks about sex. Really? Yeah. Isn't that a mind blowing thing? When you're outraged, when you see something in the street where you go, how dare you do that to that person? Yeah. There is more neurons firing in your brain than when you're going, I could really go on orgasm right now. How disappointing. Isn't it? <laughs> but here's the thing with the algorithms on, online is that they, they know this. And then I've realized I don't watch those videos anymore because I don't want to um, play into that negativity. Because mm-hmm. every time you watch that, every time you click on it, you're yeah. feeding the machine. Yes. And I'd rather feed it on positivity and rather, you know, there was that guy that skateboarded, you know, um, uh, with the uh, cranberry juice. What? Do you see this video? <laughs> no. He's skating through a hi- down a highway on- off ramp. Okay. He's got cranberry juice listening to Fleetwood Mac. And it's that you can go your own way. You know this song? Yeah. You can go your own way. Right? Oh, he's a singer. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got that good in that, in that, in that uh, way off key, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> but he's just skating down the road and then se- and he mimics the last line. Mm. Yeah, um, like something ridiculous, like 100 million views. A little snippet, 100 million views. Mm-hmm. And it stepped into this moment where everyone's depressed about COVID and being in lockdown. Mm-hmm. And it just touched people's hearts. Where it just like, oh, that's just a feel-good thing. Yeah. And I'm like, well, why aren't we doing more of that? Um, we put so much time and effort into these negative platforms and these negative doom scrolls. Like, yeah. it's so self, uh, detri- it's detrimental to us. Yeah. And I think 
like we don't even know what the view time for a four-year-old would be watching an iPad. Oh yeah, that's that's a depressing thought. We don't know the dark. We don't know. Mm. So we're in the coal mine. We're mm. the canaries in the coal mine. We don't understand it. Yeah. We're this thing that we don't understand. Like here we are on this podcast right now. I'm about to go and post it online. I'm going to post it on like you know what. 12 different platforms mm. but I still don't understand what it does like I, 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 yeah. I understand why I do it yeah but the effect that it is and why like the existential beyond that yeah like I guess we're getting into like um, external memory and collective consciousness and it's this really deep thing but I'm really about oh. to I think we're running out of time <laughs> we're, we're about out of time um, but yeah, look, um, let me um, just cycle around just to cut off of um, our existential crisis that I'm currently yes. having <laughs> um, <laughs> and promote uh, your movies that are coming out. So you've got um, uh, uh, Nobody Likes Camping. Nobody Likes Camping on YouTube. Uh, found at Velomat Films. Velomat Films. And yeah. uh, check out Rach Baker on her podcast, yes. um, which is uh, uh, Don't Be So Dramatic. Don't Be So Dramatic. It's on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So... Well, um, do you have an R? You have an RSS, right? So that you put it out on. Do you, um, what's, yes, your, what's, so your, what's your what's your base platform? Uh, my base pl- platforms are Anchor and SoundCloud. Oh wow, you're on. I'm on Anchor as well. Anchor is fabulous. How we awesome could get is into a whole thing of Anchor, but it's so fucking easy. It's just like and to for other sites to be charging like twenty dollars a month and then Anchor to be free. Yeah, it's just. What's the yeah. I mean? Like, I've got a decent like uh, YouTube audience, but my Spotify audience is all through Anchor. Yeah. Um. So what yeah. I recommend to you is um check out iHeartRadio. So I'm on iHeartRadio um, uh, now. Yes. So what you do is just take your RSS. I might be on it. I just you don't know yet. You don't know yet. <laughs> I'm on Google Play as well, but I just don't know how much traction that gets because usually people listen Apple Podcast or Spotify. So well, I can tell you how to look at that um, Thank on Anchor you. <laughs> when, it's, no, when it's on Anchor and it says other. Yeah, you know, like it'll give you like your dialogue yeah. or your um, uh, oh, analytics. Yes. yes, where it says other. Okay. So you like have like three percent other and like you know sixty percent okay. Spotify yeah. and so many on uh, uh, Apple. Yeah. Um, but totally recommend getting on iHeartRadio because okay. once you get to there. You can say simply say I can you can take buy- over the world. No, you can just say, "Oh, oh okay." <laughs> no, 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 no. But you've got an easy phrase because, like, when you do your podcast, you're like, "Don't forget to find me on Spotify. Don't forget to find me on Apple iTunes. Yeah. Uh, don't forget to find me on Anchor. And of course, we're on YouTube. You don't have to say any of that. You can go wherever you find podcasts. <laughs> just anywhere. <laughs> just anywhere. I'm everywhere. <laughs> So I totally recommend that. Yeah. So uh, don't forget to check out Rachel Baker on um uh, uh what was that again? Don't don't, don't be, be so, so dramatic. dramatic. <laughs> don't be so dramatic. Uh, but look, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, talking to you today. Yes. I've been looking forward to this podcast. So thank you for being on the show. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. It's really nice to not have to edit this afterwards. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I can resonate. I don't have to edit it. Um, but I'm missing my bug. I'm going to miss my bug on this. Okay. My computer failed. So no bug for you guys today. <laughs> Um, but yeah, speaking of which, you can find us on uh, YouTube, you can find us on Spotify, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Anchor, and iHeartRadio, basically anywhere you find podcasts. <laughs> uh, you've been watching The Pager Train, and we'll see you next time. Sonic Boom. Oh, all done. <laughs>